Wajir town, a town where proper sanitation is more of a luxury than a basic necessity. A walk through the town reveals that most residents here have little or no access to a toilet. A situation which poses serious health implications. Answering a call of nature is one that most residents here do not look forward to. The bucket toilet system is an all familiar story here. Plastic bags are an alternative to the bucket toilet. Due to their lightweight nature, these plastics end up being scattered everywhere. But Waji residents can now breathe a sigh of relief thanks to the Kenya Commercial Bank. The residents now have 60 improvised waste receptacles worth about 400,000 shillings. The receptacles are expected to be mounted on various streets in Wajir Town and will be under the care of Wajir Town Council. Speaking during the launch of the project, Northeastern Kenya Development Minister, who is also the area legislator, Mohamed Elmi, said that the move will provide solution to the never-ending challenge of waste management in this town. This is absolutely necessary. This town, although we are now building a sewage, is the only town in this country which is still using uh, uh, bucket latrines. And we are hoping that by making sure that the waste management is controlled and managed well, uh, it will have a, a positive health outcome. On careless waste disposal by residents here, Elmi cautioned that anyone caught will be dealt with in accordance with the council bylaws. It's individuals that have been throwing around litter, the county council now can enforce the law, the bylaws, to ensure that uh, people do not have an excuse that they have no dustbins to throw uh, rubbish at. So I think it will have uh, those uh, effects in society. KCB's group company secretary, David Malakwen, promised that the bank will allocate more funds towards development projects across the country, especially areas deemed marginalized. We felt that we should give them something back because they also have challenges of water and sanitation. They cannot uh, dig any uh, big dam sites because the, the, the water level is very high and the, there's a possibility that you will just touch water and cause pollution to the aquifer beneath this town. The move comes barely two months since the government, through the Ministry of Northern Kenya Development, launched for the first time a sewage system in Wajir town. The ecotam of the week is fallow. Fallow is a farmland ploughed and harrowed but left unsown for a period in order to restore its fertility as part of a crop rotation or to avoid surplus production. Welcome to Mazingira Mtani. In the recent past, there has been growing debate internationally on whether or not the world is running out of a significant mineral, phosphorus. Phosphorus is an essential element uh, used for many life processes, uh, but in particular it's very important for plant growth and uh, crops that we rely on for food production need, to, need large quantities of phosphorus uh, to be healthy and grow well. Though the debate has not taken root in Kenya yet, there is growing concern that the world is running short of phosphorus if nothing is done to use the little there is sustainably. And it's not just a worry globally. But according to soil scientists here, Kenya should be worried too. The status right now, uh, we can say that our soils are heavily depleted. It's like the soils are sick. As an agricultural nation, yields greatly depend on how much phosphates are in the soil. So should we care whether the world is running out of phosphates or not? The worry is that uh, there have been some projections that the world's supply of phosphorus may be running out. Um, those projections vary because there's so much uncertainty over that, but they range from as little as 30 years uh, to 175 years. If this happens in 30 years, those about 10 years now will be parents and may lack food to feed their children. Those born today will be 30 years old. But the point is, uh, it is a finite resource and we can't renew it in, in human lifetimes. Um, and uh, we did see some market response to those uncertainties in 2008. 
the phosphorus prices went up by a staggering eight times, eightfold. Um, so the question is, you know, should Africa be investing now um, in phosphorus reserves while there is still uh, there is still enough supply and while while the prices are still uh, relatively low? Continuous cropping has led to this status now, where we find that the land is not as productive as it used to be. And now, because of the population pressure, we don't have as much land to be able to follow. So we have to keep on doing the same land every year. And now this calls now for proper management. And that means that we, our farmers have to be good managers of their resources because soils are the natural resource base of any nation. A report titled A Rock and a Hard Place by the Soil Association reveals that supplies of phosphate rock are running out faster than previously thought and that declining supplies and higher prices of phosphates are a new threat to food security. With the expected population increase, uh, we know that food production is going to have to increase several times um, and that is going to require large amounts of mineral phosphorus whether we like it or not. Um, there are, there are fairly limited reserves in Kenya that are not very good quality reserves, so they can't really uh, supply those needs. So there is going to be a dependence on imported uh, um, phosphorus uh, fertilizers from other parts of the world. And 90% of the world's reserves actually lie in, in only a handful of countries. Currently, a bag of fertilizer costs between 3,000 and 5,000 Kenya shillings, depending on the location of the farmer. This is relatively high to some farmers, but one they must incur to ensure increased productivity. But scientists say this can be brought down. In part two, we explore these alternatives and much more. Don't go away.